Welcome back. Well, yes, as you saw, the, uh, Mr. Lawrence Wilbert is the president, Unity Schools All Students Association. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, we're focusing on education, Correct. the education sector, yes. um, as we await the ministerial list. And speaking about the manner, the mold, the character, the personality of the kind of person who should head that sector. But speaking about Unity Schools, I mean, time was when... Uh, federal government colleges, you know, known as Unity Schools, was uh, first choice for a lot of parents. It was really preferred. But the parallel state of what they've seen these days has uh, relegated that to the background for a lot of parents. How, uh, how is the, your, the association uh, treating this particular matter? And uh, is there any plan whatsoever to ensure it goes back to what it used to be? Well, first things first, thank you. Um, the unity schools, like we know, are owned by the federal government. The alumni association, the coalition of alumni associations, um, um, of which I head as president general, um, we look at the situation with our alma mater um, as a, a situation of emergency. Um, we, we want to partner, and we are partnering with the federal government, uh, putting ourselves to partner with the federal government to make sure that we can get the, the schools back to what they were. Why? We have, as is reported, the UNICEF um, statistics of 2018 states that we have 10.5 10 million mm -hmm. children out of school, 60% of which are the girl child. Um, when you consider all that, and put it in the context of the recent development with Mr. President signing the act, um, you know, incorporating our economy with the rest of Africa, it tells us that we need to, if not even what we knew before, to be better prepared, to be competitive. Now, how can you prepare to be competitive, to survive as a nation in this modern information age, if you do not take education seriously? That said, what we're doing as, um, as an alumni association, as a coalition of alumni associations, is to see how we can intervene in the school. On the average, 70% of the 104 uh, schools which exist as unity schools have the alumni association investing about 15 million every year. There's a potential to invest even more. So one of the things... 15 million every year? Correct. Is that making the impact? Because, I mean, only recently you do, the media was awash with reports of fraud as a result of the funds that were allocated to that sector to ensure that they revive the schools. Correct. Now, what you see, it's quite interesting. When you look at the statistics of um, allocation and budgetary allocation to the to the um, unity schools. I dare say it's substantial. But does that money get to the school? That's one question we need to answer. The second question we need to answer, the allocation that gets to the school, is it utilized properly? Now, if you go to any of the unity schools, and I challenge channels to do an investigative report on that, you will find that there is a plethora of projects executed by the alumni associations. This is commendable. Now, when you consider the fact that the federal government allocates money to the school and the alumni associations are executing projects in the school, you would expect the infrastructure. Now, I'm not even talking about the soft skill investment that we alumni associations are doing in the school. You would expect that the infrastructure in the school is world class. But that is not the case. So there's a lot that needs to be done. We need to speak to ourselves as Nigerians. Now, my, my, my members, we're speaking to ourselves. The brother Nigerians, we need to speak to ourselves. Are we serious about getting our act together as Nigerians? We need to know that even as contractors, as businessmen, if we get projects in the schools, let's do them the way they should be done. Execute them. Right. On a larger scale now, yes. I know that uh, some time ago, the NESG, they had a they focused on the education sector. Right. They've done quite a lot, a lot of work in that particular sector. But now they were looking to see who becomes the minister or who heads that uh, education ministry. What kind of considerations would you like the government, the president, you know, to, to take on board in appointing the minister of education? Now, first, um, NSG is doing quite a bit in addressing this, and it, it's, it's a continuous job. So we'll, we'll carry on talking about it, and it's very important. Now, with regards to uh, who heads um, the team um, for education, it's important 
that we look towards a technocrat, someone who is well ingrained in the education sector, know its problem, not just a politician that is looking to come overhead, the beautiful team and the Federal Ministry of Education, who are competent, but there's, we need to look at what's going on in the system. That said, if we're looking at um, a technocrat, I would want to bring to Mr. President's attention that there are no better citizens in Nigeria to look into that than a graduate from a unity school. Why? Now, I say that simply because from youth, from the young age of 11, 12, a unity school graduate is being groomed to lead Nigeria, groomed to lead Nigeria as one Nigeria. A unity school graduate is being groomed, I dare say, subsidized world-class education to lead. Now, why will the federal government not tap into its own investment? It's a question I, 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 I beg Mr. President to answer. But what guarantees? Yes. I'm wondering, what guarantees will there be if you, dis you say that uh, we should have someone who has been to the unity schools in a system, an educational system, that is fraught with irregularity? Thank you. Now, I'm the President General of all unity schools also in the association. We have a resurgence going on right now within our coalition of, of, of um, uh, alumni associations. It is important that we address the question who we be. It's important that we address the question, why were we trained in these schools? Why were we even born in Nigeria? What's the purpose? Now, when that question was asked to me, I first said it should be a technocrat. Not just anybody that is qualified as, a, as any other professional, an engineer, a medical doctor, but a technocrat in the education space. But even more importantly, I say a unity school graduate because I, as President General and the Coalition of Alumni Associations, are ready to stand behind that person to say that he does a good, he or she, does a good job. And if a person doesn't do a good job, we will, be the person, we will be the ones to bring that person down. It's important to look into this because I say, why invest in us so much going into the schools, going into the universities in Nigeria? We, 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 we have the network across Nigeria, all 774 local governments. Going to those schools, I, I, I grew up with, with those from the northeast, north, north central, northwest those from the south, southeast, every part of Nigeria, even some learn different languages in the school. We have friends, we have a network that exists already. Okay. It I makes us complete Nigerians. I assume then, uh, Mr. Wilbur, that yes. um, you and all, you know, your, uh, maybe some of us as well who have gone to schools in Nigeria, but you in particular have a fair understanding of what the real issues in education are. Yes. You said something striking the other time. You said that the, the challenge is not about funding mm. or education in Nigeria. No, funding is a problem, but there's, a, there's, enough, there's a, a substantial problem going so on already. What, okay, so what are these other challenges that you, you think must be addressed if we must put education in the straight and narrow? Uh, thank you. Question that comes to mind, why don't we consider teachers the favorite citizens of the country? to be the people that is invested most in. Look at a country like Finland. We should look at the cadre of teachers that we have. The teachers should not be uh, what you might call, oh, permit me, Nigerians, should not be what you might call the least of the educators that go through the Nigerian uh, College of Education. We should have the first class students interested in the teaching profession. And how do we do that? We should invest more in teachers' training. We should invest more in, in, the, in, the, in the, uh, um, the, 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 the payments, that, the, the salaries that come to teachers. It should be an attractive profession. That is one area. Now, the other thing that has to do, what about the extracurricular activities? Go through our secondary schools, is it? And I commend channels for what they're doing in the football space. What about the other sports? How much investment is going into sports in Nigeria? We, are, we, we argue that we are 200 million plus people, plus minus. We should have at least 11 first 11s competing in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the World Cup or any of the other sports because the popul the, the, those countries that are leading in the, in the sporting arena right now, they are not even up to half of our population. Now that said, again, back to the unity schools, mm -hmm. you'll find that half of them do not even have sports facility. Now look at, for example, Federal Government Boys College Apo in Abuja, which is in the center of our government. It doesn't even have sports facility. No football field, 
no no tennis courts no table te i mean it's appalling mm. you know i'm just uh, because you know listening to you there are those who may wonder uh, you've made a point in terms of uh, you made a case for an Usosan, somebody who's been yes. to a unity school to be appointed a minister. But there could be some others who are wondering, why should that be the case? I mean, has uh, Usosa, have they put themselves out there as you know, a shadow cabinet kind of position or office where they proffer solutions, examine government policies, come up with suggestions where they think that this policy may not serve its purpose, identify where the loophole or lacuna is, and come up with something better. So have they done any of such for them to want to become Minister of Education? Okay. Um, thank you for that question. Brilliant question. Um, first things first, um, we, we've tried many others. Okay. Um, they've done, by whichever assessment you want to put it, <laughs> good or bad job. I think it's time that we need to consider those specifically who are targeting and committing that they want to do a good job and give back. Hence we say there are other areas where we should, we should uh, give back, but we're just saying let's focus on something that is our primary constituency when it comes to education. The vision of, um, of USOSA as, a, as an alumni coalition really is to, is to be in the vanguard of education and governance in Nigeria whilst creating a community of alumni associations that will be um, top three in the life of uh, our members. Mm. That said... Okay, pardon me. Uh, we'll go to break and let you complete this thought. <laughs> we'll come back in a moment. Stay with us. All right, go, go ahead and conclude your thoughts. Yeah, thank you very much um, for, for that. Uh, now, the, uh, the USOSA um, is also positioned to be a, a think tank um, producing reports and having the, the, the information ready for the education space, which will now flow into our intervention in governance. It's important that we challenge the, the knowledge, the resource base that exists within this coalition of alumni associations, which, of which number of membership is in excess of a million Nigerians. A million Nigerians, not just any Nigerians, a million Nigerians that are educated. Typically, you'll find that 70% of, of uh, your socials have gone through tertiary education. So w when you talked about um, 15 million yes. mm -hmm. uh, in terms of funding, I'm yes. just wondering, is that in dollar terms or is that in Naira terms? No, that's in Naira terms. So how, yeah. how does that money um, flow such that development is able to get to the schools that need it? Well, with the Alumni Association, our intervention really gets an intervention. Our intervention is normally direct. We interface with the, with the CEO of the school, which is the principals in the school, you know, for which projects need to be done. And then we directly now you know, um, execute such projects with the permission of the principal in the school. That's how it normally happens. You know, so if you go to all the unity schools, you will find projects, a plethora of projects which are executed by alumni associations. And the school is grateful for that. But the question we need to really ask ourselves is, with the allocation that is budgeted to mm -hmm. the schools, is there replication of these projects by the alumni associations? That's one of the problems where I'm addressing with my uh, co-national presidents to make sure that we do not spend our money on mm -hmm. projects that have been budgeted for. Because in the past, we find that we execute projects, but those have been budgeted for, and somebody in the system okay. takes that money. One more thing, just yes. a quick one. I know we're out of time. Um, in terms of ownership of the school, yes. you've talked about how dilapidated yes. the, you know, the facilities infrastructure is or are. Is there considerations as to who takes over? Does it stay with government? Does government review that partnership or does it source their own part of it? What's the plan? Thank you. Let me interject there. The, um, the first thing is the ownership of the school is a federal government. And yeah. it's, it's a good thing because the school isn't just about education. It's also a vehicle for national integration. Mm -hmm. It's also a vehicle for, uh, you know, getting, keeping Nigeria together. So that's very important. And that was one of the reasons why we say the, the, the minister should be from the unity school. So it's ingrained in us. We understand that. Now, that said, we need, the federal government needs to, needs to create a framework that will now accommodate this endowment that comes from the alumni associations. Once a proper framework is put in place where we are properly recognized right. as partners, then a lot more funding 
a naira of dollar tends to flow into the okay. system. I, I reckon this is uh, part of the considerations or discussions that will happen in that intervention or interface yes. that uh, USOSA will eventually come up with. So, well, that is it today. Mr. Lawrence Wilbert is the President General of uh, Unity Schools All Students Association. Thank you for coming and all the best. Thank you very much. All right, that is the show as well today. We thank you all for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain Uso. I'm Jim Bowman. I'm Ayo Martin Day. And I'm Mao Kwe Ogun Yusuf. Have a lovely day. Day. Expressed, expressed, expressed by guests, by guests on this stop. program are those of the maker and do not reflect the views, opinions, and endorsement of Channels Television.